So hi everybody and welcome to this webinar stream on with Avid News. Thanks a lot for taking the time to join us uh, today. My name is Craig Wilson. I'm the product evangelist for um, Media and Cloud here at Avid. And I'm delighted to say that today I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Regis Andre, who's our Senior Director of Product Management. So in the course of the next maybe half an hour, 40 minutes or so, we're going to give you an overview of Avid's new solutions um, in a cloud environment. And uh, we talk a lot about the kind of workflows that are enabled uh, because of that, looking at obviously cloud workflows and and hybrid workflows as well. We're also going to do a live demonstration focusing on what's called Media Central Cloud UX, which is our browser-based tool, looking how it can enable things like story-centric working for you know, planning, uh, content creation, content sharing, distribution, and also looking at uh, a relatively new app uh, in Media Central Cloud UX called Media Central Acquire. And Acquire is a control app uh, to control ingest devices for, for example, you know, IP streams that are coming into our system. So making it much easier to get media, you know, into our production system and to get it into the hands of the production team um, who obviously need to uh, need to work with it. Um, after the demo, we are going to have a question and answer session. So we're all very familiar with uh, obviously using Zoom these days. Um, so if you are joining us on Zoom um, and you want to submit questions, uh, please do that via the Q&A um, button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, submit the questions and then we'll do our best to answer them live um, in the webinar. Uh, if you are joining on any of the Avid social channels, first of all, thanks a lot for, for joining us there. Uh, we are broadcasting live on the Avid social channels. Uh, please feel free also to submit your questions there. Uh, we have got some colleagues who are monitoring uh, the questions there and they'll submit them to us. Um, and we'll do our best to uh, to answer these questions live um, as well. So, you know, please, we'll, we'll try and make this as um, kind of interactive um, as possible. So please feel free to uh, submit your questions and to uh, ask um, what you want to ask about any of our Avid News solutions. But before we start and get into the, the detail of it, I want to share just a quick video with you which is gonna highlight really some of the key capabilities of Avid's new solution. So let's take a look at that and then we'll get into the rest of the webinar. You know the chaos of breaking news, the stress of coordinating multiple teams to cover a developing yet rapidly changing story, the fierce competition to be first with the facts on air, online, and on social media. What if you had a solution that simplified all of this? enabling teams to connect and collaborate on stories from anywhere. A solution that makes it easy to plan, ingest, create, share, and publish content, whether you're on the scene, in the newsroom, or somewhere in between. With Avid's news solutions, you can do all of this and more. This powerful yet simple to use solution streamlines your entire workflow from content planning and creation to distribution. So you can focus on simply telling your story and you can include other team members in your plans from any part of your creative community to truly unify your teams around the story. Plan your coverage, delegate tasks, and enable all team members to sync up together in one place, wherever they are. Share media instantly with editors and graphic designers as new footage comes in for fast turnarounds. Find the media you need in seconds, including related and historical footage. Write scripts, and prepare your story for presentation. Track new developments with integrated tools. Monitor social media and news wires. Add graphics and publish your story to all of your platforms. Minimize the chaos, maximize your coverage, and harness the power of the cloud. Take your newsroom to the next level with integrated news solutions and experience seamless collaborative media production on premises and in the cloud. For more information, visit avid.com forward slash news. Great. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope that gave you a flavor of just really some of the capabilities which exist within, you know, Avid's new solutions. You know, it's not just about broadcast. It's very much about things like story-centric working. It's about publishing to social media. But really, at the heart of it all, it is all about collaboration. And of course, with collaboration, that can mean collaborating with teams that are in the building, 
uh, in the field or really at any location. And so what we're going to look at in this webinar is looking at things like media news and media production running um, in the cloud. So to talk a little bit in detail of that before we actually get into the, the, the demo for this, um, I'm going to hand over now to Regis, who's going to walk us through some of the detail uh, of what we're working on just now with Avid. So Regis, I'll hand across to you. Excellent. Thank you, Craig. Uh, hi, everybody, and thank you very much for taking the time to join us during uh, this webinar. So we're going to talk about uh, media production in the cloud. And, you know, when we're looking at it, it's definitely is a journey, right? We can't just go and take all of our production capabilities and run them in the cloud uh, instantly and get a new production system working uh, as well or as efficiently as it is on-prem. And in order to design this journey at Avid, we really decided to deliver it in a way that ensure our customers a very secure, redundant, and scalable solution. In phase one, we did a simple lift and shift. This allowed us to learn what works and what doesn't work or perform well in a full cloud environment. And we took these lessons to create phase two and phase three. I will go into more details into those phases in a few minutes. Phase two is being finalized as we speak. We are leveraging cloud native Kubernetes to enable better redundancy and scalability for the Media Central Core Engine and Playback Stack. In phase three, we will see the Windows-based components, such as our production management, being deployed as Dockers and leverage hosted database instead of VMs. On the next slide, we're going to see a diagram of the supported solution in phase one. We have several customers already leveraging this in production today. Note that at the heart of all of it is a Nexus file system running on Azure storage, preserving the workflows and capabilities that you are so used to use, but this time in the cloud. The workflow here is a simple production workflow that enables stream and file ingest, as you will see during the demonstration, full production capabilities using Media Central, Cloud UX, and Media Composer, as well as file distribution doing simple exports or publication through Media Central Publisher. Craig? Yeah, thanks a lot, Regis. And one of the key things to talk about here is the kind of workflows that this really supports because of course you know workflows are very complicated they can be very specific to you know different sectors of the sort of production environment so working with the the kind of cloud hosted system that Regis has just uh, described you know that can be ideal for things like you know show production so for example you know I'm doing a show uh, I could use file ingest tools to get the media in or I'm recording you know from um, a location I'm using uh, you know, SRT potentially to, to stream that media in, and that can then go into the Media Central system. So for show production, highlights production, you know, of course, we perhaps we've got a, you know, sports match, sports event, football game that's going on, again, using that technology to get the media in. One of the key things, as you'll see in the demonstration, is the downstream workflow um, is, uh, is the same for people, regardless of whether they're working on-prem um, or whether they are working uh, in a cloud-hosted environment. So things like highlights, sports highlights, quick turnaround um, material can be done as well. And then online news production. Um, one of the things which you, you may not necessarily have picked up on there, but we can publish to social media sites. We can publish to web CMS systems. We can publish you know, to any um, kind of online uh, destination using what's called Media Central Publisher, which which is part um, of Media Central as well. So th this first phase, these are the kind of use cases uh, that are supported um, you know, to, to do that. But of course, we want to carry on and we want to deliver more. So to find a little bit more about that, I'll hand you back again to Regis. So Regis, back to you. Hey, thanks, Craig. So as you saw in phase one, we have a production capabilities in the cloud, uh, but we have limited scalability and we have a limited set of production capabilities as well. Going into phase two, phase two, we are introducing major changes, such as running Media Central, not anymore on a Linux virtual machine, but on a hosted Kubernetes deployment natively in the cloud. This will give us better scalability, performances, and availability as well. We are also launching with phase two hybrid workflows where content can be securely transferred, securely transferred over the internet between the cloud and on-prem system, for instance. So if you need to send to an SDI server your production, no problem. You need to replicate content from an on-prem system to your cloud system for disaster recovery using Media Central Sync, no worries at all. These enhancements are really showing off how the cloud can be leveraged in regular productions. Phase two is coming very soon. And as you will see, it's really helping bridging the gap between cloud and on-prem workflows with those hybrid connectivities that we are developing. Right? Great, so thanks, Regis. So yeah, so building on obviously those use cases that we talked about in phase one, these are some of the use cases that will be available for phase two. So for example, 
what we would class as a full news operation, including you know studio capabilities connecting back to that on-prem system, more work around fast turnaround uh, production in a live news environment, and as Regis mentioned, you know a really important um, element that a lot of customers uh, are talking to us um, about at the moment is about having you know backup systems. So this will obviously now um, uh, enable um, a, you know full news disaster recovery system running in the cloud um, as well. So a whole variety of use cases. You know these are just some that we've you know decided to call out um today but really you know building on and enhancing on the kind of workflows that are currently available uh, and providing uh, more and of course a lot more on that to come so regis thanks a lot for that just now we'll be back to you in a little while when we thanks, come Fred. back to the q a um but what we're going to do now is we're going to give you a little bit of a live demonstration of some work um, that uh, that we can do um, today. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm just going to share my screen and um, bring up what's called Media Central Cloud UX. Now, the first thing to mention um, about the demonstration that I'm going to do today is that everything that I'm doing is running in the cloud. Okay, so um, I'm located in uh, in Aberdeen in Scotland, but this system that I'm using uh, today is actually running in the Microsoft um, Azure cloud. Um, it's running in a data center in, in, in West Europe, but I'm able to work, and you'll also see that Regis and I are also able to work together um, regardless of the location because it is running in a, a cloud-hosted environment. Now, if you haven't seen Media Central Cloud UX before, um, it's a browser-based tool. So this is something that's running just on Google Chrome on, on my machine, so I don't need a, you know, a high-powered machine to, uh, uh, to use it. And it's important, of course, the role of um, uh, cloud... Um, so the role of web-based tools um, really to enable uh, people to work uh, really effectively in the cloud environment. So Media Central Cloud UX yeah, runs in a, in, a, in a browser and really it enables lots and lots of different workflows. So here, while we're specifically talking about news, um, really any media production workflow, you know, whether you're doing things like logging or searching or um, shortlisting, all of these things can be done um, using um, Media Central Cloud UX. So just a quick overview. So the first thing to point out is that we're actually looking at what we class as an app inside of Media Central Cloud UX. And this is the Media Central Collaborate app. Now, just to point out that along the top here, is where I have access to all of the various different apps that I'm going to use. And I'll talk you through some of the other ones. So what do we mean by Media Central Collaborate? So Media Central Collaborate really is the hub of planning, um, assigning tasks uh, to, to, uh, to users, tracking the, the progress um, of jobs um, as, they, as they go through, and also about sharing media. Now, clearly working in a newsroom, it is all about collaboration, and that really is what um, uh, Media Central uh, Collaborate is about. And also more widely, it's about what Avid's news solutions have been known for, you know, for um, a, a great number of years. And of course, people want to create content for broadcast. That's still, you know, fundamentally important. People also want to create content for publishing out to social media as well. And these are all different types of workflows that can be done in Media Central um, Cloud UX. And I'm gonna show you um, uh, some examples um, of that. So just to briefly talk about some of the, the other apps that we have here, um, we have got a browse app that lets me browse and navigate through the different systems that I'm using. We have the ability to search. Um, we can, of course, use Media Central Collaborate. We've got file ingest tools. So, you know, Regis mentioned before about, you know, getting media into cloud hosted systems. We have integrated uh, file ingest tools. This is the Media Central um, ingest app. But of course, another way of getting media into a system is by using, um, uh, for example, uh, IP streaming devices. Um, and to get media into a traditional system, of course, you're using, you know, SDI sources. And of course, looking ahead to the future, um, you know, we're looking more at, uh, you know, 2110, um, you know, video over IP um, sources as well. And so what we have here is a, a new app. It was just launched um, in the 22.12 the release. Um, of Media Central that came out um, uh, just before uh, the new year. And this is what's called Media Central Acquire. Uh, and Media Central Acquire is about controlling those ingest devices to then bring media um, into my Media Central production system and really into the hands of the creative team um, who can then you know, do what they need to do um, with it. So Media Central Acquire uh, can control 
a Media Central Stream. So Media Central Stream um, is a, an I.O. device for recording from um, IP sources such as uh, SRT or RTMP. We also have LiveView um, workflows um, as well. So basically what it does brings in those sources on the fly, converts them into your house codec. So when media actually comes into your main production system, it's instantly available for, uh, for people to, to use. Media Central Acquire can also control, control um, fast serve devices for um, traditional SDI um, ingest as well. But today we're going to focus a little bit more on that streaming uh, type of ingest. So what we can see inside of Media Central Acquire um, is I'm actually controlling four channels here, and I'll talk about these in a, in a second. I could be controlling many more. A Media Central Stream, an individual Media Central Stream device has four channels, but I could be controlling 8, 12, 16, 24, however many that I, I want to have. We can scale you know, very large here. What this allows us to do is to plan and schedule recordings. So you can actually see here, I've got a couple of recordings that are scheduled in, and these will just happen automatically when it gets to you know, the appropriate time. Um, these will just carry on. The media will begin to record. That media has been recorded into our Avid Nexus storage. Again, that Nexus, the Nexus virtual file system is running in this case on storage in the Azure um, cloud, okay? So the Nexus, um, which you might be familiar with as a sort of physical box that you know exists in a in your server room, the Nexus virtual file system. One of the reasons why that was developed is so it can also run and perform extremely well um, in a, a cloud hosted environment. And it's also worth mentioning, of course, that Avid, um, you know, is one of the very very few vendors that has its own storage, very much tuned to media production, um, and of course integrated um, incredibly tightly with Media Central. So you know you don't have to worry about if you've got an asset management system from one vendor and storage from another vendor and potential problems between them, you don't have to worry about that with, uh, with Avid, of course, because we have our own storage and Avid Nexus storage used in the most demanding of media production environments, scaling up to hundreds um, of users um, uh, as well. So here I've got a couple of recordings that are set to go, but I want to do um, you know, a recording just now to, to show you how this, how this works. So I'm gonna do this on channel one here. But one of the things about Media Central Acquire is I can actually preview the streams as they're coming in before I actually do the recording itself. Um, I can, of course, change the routing, but I'm not going to do this. You know, I'm going to keep the, the routing um, as it is. But I want to do a recording, and we're going to work on a, a story about um, a volcano. So that's what I'm going to use today. And so I can see here that, you know, these are some shots that I've got, um, you know, of a volcano that's coming in. I can also see here that, you know, the coastline shots are lined up to record on this channel, but actually the coastline is coming in uh, on another channel. So let me go ahead, first of all, and just set up a recording um, just now uh, on this channel. So to do that, I can do that in a couple of different ways. Um, I'm just going to right click here, click on create recording. I can see this other recording is now starting now while I'm doing this. So I'm just going to go in here and I'll call this one Volcano. And we'll make this a, a, a crash recording. I'll record for five minutes. But of course, you know, I can set this up to record, um, you know, in the uh, in the future, uh, I can do lots and lots of different things. So I can also choose which channel it's coming in, the source it's coming in. I can choose which template to use here as well. I can also have what are called spare channels. So this is another way um, of enabling. Um, if there's a problem with a channel, you know, another channel would potentially take over um, at this point. So let me just go into record um, uh, on this channel. And what you see is the channel will go into a queued state and will then begin to record. So I can see it's now going red uh, and this recording is now happening. So while this is happening, um, I want to change this one. So I can go in here and I can choose to edit the recording. And I'm simply going to go in and I'm going to change the source to say, actually, this is going to come in on channel one. And I can then save that. And you can then see that the recording, you know, changes and moves around. So you can do scheduled recording, ones that are going to happen uh, one off, ones that are happening every day, every week, every month. You can build a schedule and these things will then just happen automatically. If I now select the recording and I'll just bring up the recording info area at the bottom here, I can then see more information about obviously what's going on um, at the moment. But if I wanted to actually see this recording, all I need to do here is just double click on it um, in the, um, the calendar view that I have. 
And this is now going to load it into my player here inside of Media Central Cloud UX. And I can now come in and I can review and I can play this back even as it is a feed that is incoming to me, you know, at this particular time. Now, I appreciate over Zoom and doing streaming and things like this, you know, it may look like the picture stuttering and things like that. That's simply um, because it's coming through on Zoom. The, the playback is, is very smooth for me here. But let's imagine that, um, um, you know, I'm using Media Central um, Acquire. I'm doing this recording. But also I want to collaborate, you know, I want to go in and I want to share and, and distribute and use this content with uh, with other colleagues. So how can I use Media Central Collaborate um, to do this? Well, if you look here at the top right hand side, um, I can see that I've got a notification and that's because I've been tasked to do certain jobs. So you can see here I've got new assignments, new tasks, things like that. So I can just click on the assignment. Um, and this is now going to take me from Media Central Acquire directly into my Media Central Collaborate assignment. So what am I looking at here? Well, first of all, at the right hand side, I can see some tasks. So, for example, here I've got one that's allocated to me to monitor some ingest feeds and do some recordings. I can now update the status and say, OK, this is actually something that's now in progress because it's happening you know, obviously just now. So, of course, anybody else who's working on this will know that this is in progress. But what about sharing this feed that's coming in with everyone who's potentially working on the story? Because you could have someone who's doing research, someone who's doing something for a show, something, someone who's doing something for um, you know, an online publication, for example. Well, it's really, really simple. All you have to do is drag and drop from the player into this area here in the middle, which is called the container. And the container is where I can really share any content uh, that I have, but it's also a place where I can begin to collaborate and work with my other colleagues. So I can see here there is another task, which is to do research on volcanoes, uh, which myself and Regis have both been allocated to. So you can see here, yep, yeah, I need some background work done on volcanoes. Can you put the information in a note here for me as well? So what we have here is we have a note. So I'm just going to open up um, this note. Um, and in this note is um, some information that's obviously been added. But the other thing here is that Regis is also in this note as well. So you can see as I, you know, I'm not, here's my hands, my fingers, I'm not typing anything. Um, Regis and I are able to work together in the same note at the same time. So I can, you know, see Regis obviously updating this live. Um, and equally, you know, if we wanted to, um, you know, we could also use this as a chat. So, you know, we could say, use this as a live chat to send messages to each other and to, to work in this way as well. But the key thing here is that, you know, we're both able to work in a note in the same time. So it's a bit like, you know, a, a, a document that's sitting on OneDrive um, or something that's running in, you know, a Google Doc, for example, as well. And you can have multiple people that can work in this. So imagine you've got multiple people all want to go in and share information, you know, about the story. And of course, you can also have multiple notes um, in, a, in a story um, as well. So it's very kind of you, Regis, to say that you're, uh, you know, enjoying the, the demo as well. So thanks a lot for that. I'm going to carry on uh, with, uh, with things just now. So I can just close that. Regis can carry on working uh, with uh, what's going on there. But I can see I have another task. Uh, and my task here is to write a story uh, and edit a sequence for a show. So again, the same thing. I'm going to say now that this is um, in progress. I'm just going to save that change. So again, that just updates. And updating the status really just makes sure that everyone who's working on, you know, the story is aware of what's going on. The other thing I can also see in here is that I've also got a story. And this is a story from a particular running order um, in my Media Central Newsroom Management story. Now, Media Central Newsroom Management, uh, it's the, the name for iNews. You may be familiar with it in the past. And so, you know, iNews has got a thick client that, you know, might be familiar with, but I'm going to use effectively iNews here inside of Media Central Cloud UX by using what's called the Rundown app. And it's really simple to navigate to there because all I have to do is just double click um, on that story in the Collaborate container, and it takes me directly to that story um, in the rundown. So what I'm looking at at the top here is the list of all the stories in the rundown. And then at the bottom here, I have the actual story itself. So I'm just going to hide this view uh, and I'm going to begin to work on here. 
Now, one of the things about Media Central Cloud UX is, I mentioned at the start, is it enables lots and lots of different workflows. Okay, so for example, one of the things I want to do here is I obviously want to go in and want to add in some information. So I'm going to begin to type my story. Um, and so to do that, I could use something that's you know really useful uh, is to insert what's called a script template. You know, script templates are just very quick ways of putting in things like production um, instructions. So for example, I want to put in something where the presenter is speaking to camera. So automatically, you know, can add that information in for me. Um, you can also do that with a keyboard shortcut um, as well. And now, of course, it would be a case of, you know, um, writing a story. So I'm just going to type in some text here. So I, of course, can carry on. I could write my script. I could write my story. I could write my text. But the next thing I also want to do is I want to begin to edit uh, here as well. So to do that, all I need to do is to click on this button here to then open a linked sequence, which I have. And if I bring up my timeline, you see here, I also have a linked sequence. Now below the screen here, you see I have an audio tab um, as well. Uh, obviously for the audio tab, um, if I wanted to, I could record a voiceover. So again, using a, a browser-based tool, I could record a voiceover here as well. If I wanted to record a script, I could just plug a mic in uh, and I could go ahead and do that. Now, I'm actually just going to hide this panel at the moment just to give me a little bit more screen real estate, just to make this a little bit bigger. And I have a single video monitor here. So I can just switch from my source material, you know, to my um, recorded uh, sequence. I can just switch and I can use that using the keyboard. It's just the escape key that does it. Um, or I can click um, in the, the browser here as well. So this, of course, now allows me to go um, and to edit. So I'm just going to mark a few things and pop them on the timeline. I'm not going to do anything um, hugely uh, exciting uh, today, just for the purposes of the demo. Now, one thing to mention within Media Central Cloud UX, there are, of course, different types of editing that you can do. So you can do very basic editing, which is a shot list, just cut, 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 you know, or just pull some shots um, together. Um, you can do slightly more advanced, which is what I'm doing just now. You know, I've got three tracks of audio, one track of video. I can record voiceover um, in here as well. But we also have got more complex editing where I can go up to four tracks of video, eight tracks of audio. And of course, anything that I do here can be instantly picked up by any colleagues who are working on Media Composer, for example, or even Adobe Premiere Pro, because of course we have integration with Adobe Premiere Pro as well. It's also worth mentioning that the Media Central Collaborate panel that we talked a little bit about earlier on, that's also available inside of the Media Central panel for Composer, for example. It's also available in the third-party Creative Tools panel for Adobe Premiere Pro, also for After Effects, and also for Photoshop as well. So when I talked at the start about, you know, Media Central being all about collaboration, it's not just about collaboration within the Avid ecosystem, it's also about collaborating within the Adobe um, ecosystem as well. So you can really expand out, of course, the team members that are all working and using uh, this together as well. There is also um, an app for Media Central Collaborate for iOS as well. So even if you're working on location, you can, of course, also um, do this as well. So. We've talked a little bit about, you know, working on uh, different things here. I've created my story, you know, I've done some editing. I can, of course, just save this um, as well. But again, the same thing, perhaps I want to take this, I want to share and make this available for someone else to, uh, to then, you know, review and look at exactly the same as before. I can drag and drop my sequence and put that into the Collaborate container. So as you can imagine, you know, multiple people are working on this particular story they're all able to work and to go and to do different things with it. So if you imagine, you know, I've, I've created my story here, I'm finished with it. What's the next thing I want to, um, I want to do? I want to obviously publish um, and to distribute this. Well, I can do what's called send to playback. And what send to playback will do is take what I've edited, <coughs> edited here <coughs> and send it to a playout server. So I mentioned at the start that in Media Central Acquire, I was controlling what's called Media Central Stream for ingest. Well, Media Central Stream also has got playout capabilities as well. So, you know, I could also be sending to Media Central Stream to play out to, you know, any uh, other device as well. But perhaps someone else who's working here wants to take what I've edited, um, but actually then repurpose it for another purpose. Perhaps they want to use Media Central Publisher 
to distribute this out to you know social media platform? Well, it's really straightforward because all I need to do here is I can just do save as. So I, of course, could save this as another version um, and then take this, re-edit it, you know, change whatever it is I want to do. And if I wanted to publish the social media, I don't need to go to another application. I don't need to export something out to somewhere else. I just go into Media Central Publisher. It's another app inside of Media Central Cloud UX. And this is where I can now go in. I can apply templates. I can add station branding. I could add additional graphics onto here. And I could publish, if I wanted to, simultaneously to you know, social media sites like YouTube, like Instagram, like TikTok, like Facebook, um, or to our website um, as well. So all of this capability exists inside of Media Central um, Cloud UX. Of course, a lot of our customers are using this kind of capability on their on-premise systems today, but this is also, also something which I go back to, as I mentioned at the start, everything that I've shown you today is all running in a cloud-hosted um, environment as well. So I appreciate that's a very quick run through of, you know, lots and lots of, um, of, of different things. Um, so maybe we'll, you know, delve, we'll take a little pause for me. I can have a breath, I can take a breath um, and we'll bring uh, Regis back in um, and we'll, you know, begin to, um, you know, explore these things in a little bit more detail. So I'm just going to stop sharing just now. So Regis, if you just want to pop back on camera again. Ah, you're there already. Perfect. That's uh, that's great. So, so, so thanks a lot for for that. And and hopefully everyone that's given you a flavour of just some of the capabilities that um, that are possible. You know, using um, Media Central Cloud UX and of course working um, in that kind of cloud environment. So the first thing I was going to ask you, Rajiv, is, you know, I talked a lot about you know collaboration. You know, I talked a lot about things like working really efficiently and effectively, you know, regardless of where people are. So what are customers saying to us um, about the need to work efficiently? What is their kind of main theme that they're looking at just now? And there's lots of different uh, themes in that one single question. Uh, depends uh, what your workflow is, what your role is. Collaboration means different things. So as you demonstrated today, by leveraging the web browser and being able to access remotely Media Central, you can share content, you can share assignments to collaborate and better task and manage tasks across different people across the organization. But there are different types of uh, collaboration as well. For instance, a lot of our users are telling us that they want to better being able to leverage people working in the field and being able to shoot footage and being able to upload content much more easily into the systems. That's why we're really looking very heavily into mobile-first workflows right now, where we can leverage the power of uh, mobility of cell phones and the cameras that are in there and how we can leverage them to really have a very well-integrated workflow with the whole media central production system. Uh, another area of focus as well is communication in terms of chat. Just like you demonstrated in a note in Collaborate, we can use it for chat, but it's not really the what it was designed for, for chatting. It was remake to create notes and write your script and stories and things like this. Uh, so we are doing a lot of work around chat. We didn't want to reinvent our own chat system, obviously. So we are partnering with uh, companies like Microsoft, with Microsoft Teams, where we are building a different uh, mechanism to connect with it. So you can have notifications flowing between different tools, whether it's Media Central or Microsoft Teams. We have also integration with Media Composer. We're working on over-the-shoulder workflows as well, where you can share screen your timeline in real time, leverage. SRT. So there are lots of different uh, things that are related to better collaboration uh, that we are working on right now. And I think the other thing that this showed is that, you know, um, for people who don't know, Regis is based in France. I mentioned earlier on, you know, I'm here in Scotland, you know, the system we're using is running in the in the in the Azure cloud. So, you know, these are great examples of in real time collaboration. You know, it's not about exporting or moving things around it's about people being able to you know collaborate and work together in in real time and of course when it comes to news that of course is the really critical part yeah that's uh that's very very interesting what you just said because we're doing it every day for demo purposes but we know and we see customers doing it as well with covid of course a lot of people have been starting to not go to work uh, to do their job and and the advantages of using media central because again it's all web based and now with the the add-on of Acquire, which is just demonstrated. I can now start to manage even my ingest channels uh, directly from home. I don't have to be in a technical room where I used to be in the office. So there's definitely a lot of capabilities here. And that does tell very well into another question that we just got on the Q&A, where uh, Liam, I believe, is asking us, 
hey, can I now start to share content in the same timeline in Media Composer or in CloudUX between different systems, whether they're on-prem or in the cloud? And this is again about also enabling better collaboration. A lot of our customers have multiple systems. They may have a system for sports, for production, for news, for shows, or they have different localization as well. Uh, here in France, there are many TV stations uh, locally that are national broadcasters. It's the same in the US and of course, a lot of uh, other countries. So uh, we have this capability in Media Central called multi-site. Multi-site enable you to search across all your different sites, find content, and in Media Central, being able to put content in the timeline for the different sites. So you are editing, obviously, through proxies, content from all those different sites. You're collaborating, in a way, with the other sites by leveraging their assets. And when you're done, you can publish what you just built into your Playout server or to the cloud or to a, a CMS. This is available for uh, Media Central. For Media Composer, we're not there yet, but we are definitely working on it. We introduced uh, earlier this year a product called Nexus Edge uh, that enables Media Composer to remotely access content on an on-prem Nexus through uh, leveraging proxies. That Media Composer can now edit uh, in real time across very, very long distance. I don't have to be on a high-speed network. So we are going to also do this work in Media Composer, leveraging the Nexus Edge technology to let Media Composer access multiple Nexuses, whether they're on-prem or in the cloud, and mix that content in the timeline. Yeah, Regis, and, and as you mentioned, Media Composer there, one thing I'll mention to everyone who's on the webinar is that um, we actually have a webinar for Media Composer coming up next week. Uh, and if you want to, at the end of this presentation, I am going to share a QR code, um, which will allow you to register with, with that. So if you want to get your cameras ready for when we get towards the end of the webinar, there will be a QR code that comes up that will take you to the registration page so you can find out the latest um, of what's going on um, in, uh, in Media Composer. And there's lots of really interesting things which, the, the team there will be able to, uh, to to tell you. So, Regis, one of the things I mentioned earlier on when I was doing using Media Central Acquire is that one of the challenges, of course, has always been with cloud systems is getting media into you know the cloud to to start with. And clearly, in a news environment, you know you can't really have any kind of delay of of getting material there. So, one of the things I believe that we're working on is is trying to solve that whole issue around you know baseband ingest. Um, into a sort of cloud-based environment. So I don't know what you can tell us um, about that. Sure. So when you look at baseband ingest, obviously uh, you need to, and your production system being in the cloud, you need a way to securely transfer while the ingest is happening to your cloud production system. So a lot of the work that we've been doing uh, with the team is really to look at, okay, what are the different transfer mechanisms uh, that can be done uh, in a secure manner. And that's really a big thing It's security. Not everybody has a private fiber going to a cloud provider. It's a lot of the transfers would be done over the public internet, likely with a VPN or some sort of reverse proxy or some sort of security, but um, you don't control necessarily the wire uh, all the way. So a lot of the work we've been doing is, okay, how do we do fast, secure transfer? And that also supports very variable latencies. The network may go down, the, may, the network bandwidth may go up and down as you're using the public internet. So we're calling, this, we're calling this hybrid transfers. And this is exactly what I was referring to when I was referring to doing send to playback from the cloud to an on-prem SDI server. That's exactly the same technology we are leveraging here. That technology has been in the work for a bit for a little while now and has been released for Media Central Sync today. Media Central Sync enables you to move content from your on-prem system to a cloud DR system. And we are leveraging exactly that same secure uh, accelerated transfer mechanism to move the media throughout the cloud, throughout the internet, sorry. Yep. I mean, there's no doubt, Regis, it's a very exciting area. Um, you know, a lot of people are obviously looking at it and have been um, over the course of the last few years. But I think something that you said earlier on is worth maybe repeating that obviously what we're looking to provide is a sort of pathway for customers, you know, to use and obviously to do that in a secure way. So I know security is a really key aspect of everything that we do um, at Avid uh, around Media Central as well. So I just wonder if you want to talk a little bit about the kind of security work that we're doing and how important that is for customers. Oh, we could do an entire webinar on yeah, we security. <laughs> it is definitely a uh, fascinating but very, very complex subject. There are different levels of security, of course, uh, and we just talked about one, security of the data over wire, uh, you know, uh, especially when you're going over the public internet. So there is encryptions uh, that are going on. There are also encryption of files. 
But there, the security goes uh, all the way through the entire stack. It's not just what's happening when I'm moving content. It's also what's happening in the code of the application itself. So for the last few years, we've been really following a, a new protocol, you know, development practices that bleeds into as early as the design phase of what we are doing, where we are doing security assessment as soon as a feature request or a design of a feature is done by one of the product owners that have it. There is a dedicated security person that goes and look at the requirement and try to see, okay, are those requirements create security issues in the future? And we're wrapping this process throughout the entire production of the code and the software. And of course, until delivery and deployment of our customers. And what's interesting as well is on-prem deployments and cloud deployments have different security uh, issues as well that we need to address. So we are really looking at this uh, uh, extremely seriously. We have dedicated people for that. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we insist uh, very often that our customers are brave because um, uh, in order to always stay current, like with your antivirus or your web browser, you need to upgrade. That's very much true as well for our software. We need to upgrade uh, libraries that we are using, whether it's Java or database systems such as Mongo or others. And um, that's very important. And uh, yes, it's, uh, it's uh, something that we're spending a lot of time on. And I think as well, it's also worth mentioning that you know, we very much see security as it's a shared responsibility. You know, it's a shared responsibility with the customers and there's a very close relationship, you know, for us to, you know, to work uh, work together and with them um, as well. Uh, so, Regis, there are no other open questions at the moment. Thank you very much for everyone who sent the questions um, sent the questions um, in. Oh, in fact, there's a question that's just oh, come in just um, as we were uh, looking at there. Um, so there's a question from Liam who's talking about the cloud DR for, for news, um, who's asking, is the Media Central database dupli duplicated um, in the cloud in, in real time? So if you want to talk, do you want me to talk a little bit about Sync or do you want to talk about Sync? I, I'm happy to do it, uh, you know, because uh, you've been talking a lot. So I, I'll leave it to you then, Regis. I'm going to be good to you. Uh, no, but Media Central Sync is, uh, is an add-on to Media Central. And basically what it does is expose um, the production database uh, structure and you can go and select the folders you want to uh, copy. And uh, basically you're creating rules. You say, okay, those projects, I want to synchronize them to a cloud system for disaster recovery. And uh, those rules can be really up to you, Liam. Uh, you can decide that you want to do a backup every night or you want to do it every week, but you can also ask for that backup to be done in real time. So as soon as a new asset is created, uh, we will start transferring the media on, from Nexus to Nexus. But we also copy, of course, the, 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 the folder, the database structure from the production management a to the to the B side, if you want. So you have exactly the same folder structure, all the metadata, metadata are carrying around. And then you have rules that I can also uh, des describe what's happening if you're deleting the media on the source system and the project, do you want to delete also on the, on the backup system or not? So there are a lot of uh, capabilities in Media Central Sync, uh, in, uh, in Media Central Sync. Yeah, no, that's great, Regis. Worth mentioning as well that Media Central Sync, of course, um, also possible on-prem and also possible now on WAN um, systems as well. So it's not something that you have to have um, a cloud-enabled um, you know, system to, to do. If you have a network of systems in the same building, for example, you could, of course, use Media Central you know, Sync to, uh, to, to do that as well. So, Regis, uh, thank you very much um, for that. I'm going to wrap things up. Uh, thank you. Just now, and I'll forget to share my, uh, share my screen uh, for the last few slides. Thanks, Regis. So really just to summarize, you know, obviously what we've you kind of looked at um, today is are about building an efficiency. You know, it is about being collaborative. It's about enabling people to work in the most efficient way, whether they are in the building, whether outside the building. You know, the example that, you know, we showed in the demonstration, you know, I'm working from home here in Scotland controlling ingest devices that are in a different location to share media with colleagues who could be anywhere. You know, it's very much about that remote, you know, collaboration as well. And we're making lots and lots of innovations and made lots and lots of investments in that innovation, the likes of Media Central Acquire, Media Central Collaborate, and of course, you know, more to more to come. It is about expanding these capabilities. You know, it, it's software is never done. You know, it's always developing. There's always new, um, you know, versions coming out. There's always new capabilities um, coming out. Media Central Collaborate is that whole center of everything. It is about planning, tracking, sharing content as well, working on mobile, working on web-based tools, you know, working inside of, of Media Composer. 
And of course, an Avid News Solutions, it's about creating for any destination. It's not just about, you know, creating using one application to create something for a broadcast show. You could be creating something for a broadcast show, creating something for online, creating something for social, doing that in a really efficient, effective, collaborative way um, and delivering, you know, better stories faster to more um, destinations. So just to finish things off, I mentioned um, a couple of minutes ago that, um, you know, we have got a webinar uh, coming up uh, next week um, where we're going to uh, go over all of the new uh, features that were added in Media Composer, you know, through the course of 2022. Um, similar to Media Central having a 2022.12 release, there was a 2022.12 release of Media Composer as well. So uh, next Thursday, which is, of course, is the, the 16th of February, um, at the times which are listed there, so 10 Pacific, 1 Eastern, uh, and 6 o'clock, um, in the UK, uh, there will be a, a live webinar delivered by our colleagues who will take you through the latest in Media Composer. So, of course, you can scan the QR code that's on the screen uh, just now. And that will take you directly to the registration link and you can then register to watch live or, of course, you can then register uh, to watch on demand um, afterwards. So please feel free to, uh, to do that. And if you want to find out more about anything that we've talked about um, today, then of course you can go to the Avid website where there is a dedicated page that looks at our work around media production in the cloud. That's the link to it there, but there's also a QR code here as well. So again, if you scan that QR code, that will also take you directly to that web page. And of course, on the Avid website, you can find out not just specifically about the cloud, but you can find out all of the latest uh, work that's going on on Media Central for news, for sports, um, you know, for a whole variety of different kind of um, applications. You can find all the information there um, as well. But for the moment, uh, you know, we'd just like to thank everyone who took the time to, to join us um, today and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks a lot and goodbye.